purity culture is an evangelical church phenomenon that began in the 1990s, with the children of the sexual revolution having children of their own. With the rise of AIDS and teen pregnancy at the time, Christian parents and pastors got together and decided to change the way sex education was taught in Christian circles. Purity culture, as it has since been defined, pushed the idea of saving yourself for marriage, especially onto young women. Analogies, as shown here satirically by YouTuber God is Grey, were presented in youth services to young people. Ladies, your body is this chocolate bar. Every time you have sex with a man, he takes pieces away from you until you're diminished to less and less and less than. And who's going to want to marry a piece of chocolate? The movement also encouraged young women to dress conservatively for the boys around them, to prevent sexual assault, and pushed for girls to live their lives in fear of their own sexuality. As journalists, we wanted to know what our interviewees thought of the movement, and if they had even experienced it themselves. I have journeyed with what I think purity is and, what, and how I think modesty affects and as a woman in faith, what that means for me. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, for me personally, I think that modesty and purity, a lot of the time, comes down to um, what your intentions behind it are, and whether you are doing things out of um, needing attention or out of even things like even out of hurt or whatever. Like I think it's quite important to know as a, as the individual why you're doing what you're doing. But I think it's really important, especially for women in church, to still be able to feel sexy, to still be able to feel attractive, to um, still be able to dress ways that makes them feel confident. And I don't know if we talk about that enough. I think we should. I think um, for our younger women, we should definitely not shame those things, because um, they're not shameful. Um, we're all blessed with beautiful bodies, so we should own that. It makes me angry how people shame other people according to their religion because of what they've done or what they've experienced before and I think that that's quite a dangerous part of Christianity because it ends up turning a lot of people away from the church. Oh, you're, you know, you've had sex, oh sorry, you know, you've um, partaked in this, you've done this, you've done this, like it creates a very judgmental image and especially around it, surrounding purity culture and as a woman it creates a judgmental in, image and it puts like pressure on yourself. Like, it, like it ties into the whole purity thing, like it's the onus is on you to not make guys want to rape you basically like if, if you wear something that's like oh you're showing your thighs or like stuff like that then it's like your fault but it's not like just don't rape people yeah i think us as women have a duty to dress well um that can mean different things to different people, but for me personally, I would choose to wear something slightly less revealing. Um, it's also a male's responsibility to um, respect women. And yeah, I guess it just comes down to that, just respect each other. When that idea of purity is affixed particularly to women and girls, and women are kind of, and girls are judged based on solely on their, their sort of sexual chastity or their, their, their sexual status um, and yeah I mean I think the, the Bible does reinforce that in the way that it uh, it's, it's far more concerned about women's virginity than it is about men's I mean that's just not even an issue but a woman's expected to be a virgin when she's married if she's found not to be a virgin one of the biblical laws says she, she can be uh, put to death so these are very ancient texts you know, obviously churches aren't advocating that today but the, but the idea the the value of a woman being related to her sexual purity is is something that can be quite i think it's quite damaging